Hey everyone, welcome into the video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips that I picked up along the way while I was doing my DIY sticker books. This is the second attempt that I'm making at doing these sticker books and it's been several years since the first attempt. So y'all, I picked up some tips and I wanna share those with you. If you wanna hear those tips, stay tuned. So welcome back into the video, everybody. And today I'm gonna to share with you some tips in a couple different categories. Number one, the cover. Number two, your method of attachment, right? Um, or cardstock. Number three is going to be your adhesive types um, and your sticker sorting. Number four is going to be your disc and your dividers, y'all, okay? I picked up some tips while I was redoing this that I think will help you uh, while you are in the process of making your sticker books. This is not a DIY video, so I'm not going to be kind of doing it and showing you how to make the sticker book. I'm just going to be giving you the tips so that as you go through the process of attempting to make your own, you avoid some pitfalls that I fell into, <laughs> some pits that I fell into, y'all. And um, you're able to have a smoother process in making your sticker book. So let's dive right in. The first is going to be the cover tip on this is y'all do not make the cover until you are finished with your sticker book um i fell into that pit because i figured you know what let me just while i'm i'm tearing everything out of the cover let me cut the cover and it's an easy win to be able to just adhere it to the cardstock put it in here we're done and in theory that kind of sort of is how it should have worked out um, because I didn't need to laminate this or anything like that. I was okay with it being just bare um, and original. And yeah, no, that's really not what happened. If you notice on my sticker book here, um, it's it's you see how much it protrudes from out of the cover? Yeah, okay. Well, what had happened? was is <laughs> as I was making the sticker book my method of attaching the stickers to the um, sticker pages I, I, I ended up having to change that because that method was not working to my likeness or my satisfaction and the method was this um, and this is kind of cross category but it's okay uh, when I started to make these I was following a video and what the young lady had done, which I don't remember the video. If I do, I'll link it in the description. And what she did was she measured about an inch and then she marked and then she used that, that mark in order to line up this sticker sheet. So that's what I started doing first. Um, when I looked at it after I did a whole sticker book because I tried to give it a chance to settle in and see how I feel about it, I did not like the amount of space that was here. And I, I didn't like the way that looked at all. It just wasn't sitting well with me. And so because of that method of attachment, y'all, I, mm, yeah, they were now bigger than what I ended up doing. And I had to even trim off the very end section, if you can look at this, you'll see it still here. Trim off the very end section of the sticker sheet just to try to make it not such um, a big difference between the sizes. The method of attachment that I ended up using was just to eyeball it, y'all, and using the uh, punch, the mushroom, as my guide. So I used the end of the mushroom, as you can see, get as close as possible to it that I was comfortable with, with just a little bit of space. And I just used that as my mode of attachment um, and my measurement. Oh my goodness, that saved me so much time. And it was, I love the way this looks. This looks so much better to me, right? So you can see the difference, not on this side, but you can see the difference between the two 
right here okay so let me know what do you think does does the left one bother you at all um you know is does the left look better than the right what what what's your thoughts and your your opinion on this particular attachment right so that is tip number one do not make the cover until you have completed your sticker book or else you might run into where it does not cover and now you have no recourse Another thing that I'd like to say about your sticker book cover, you can choose to use so many different things to make your sticker book cover. I loved this colorful boxes sticker, so I chose to keep it. Um, I chose to keep this on the front. I do have something else on the back. Yes, I know it is upside down. It's all good, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's all good. In this particular DIY sticker book, I'm okay with all sorts of mistakes because I already knew that this was going to be where I can do as much experiment as possible. And so it doesn't really matter. Things don't have to be, you know, close to perfection in here for me. So you, I, I didn't want to laminate this. But you can choose to laminate your covers if you want to do that. You could choose to use your favorite um scrapbook paper you can choose to use uh, planner dividers cut them down to size and use it uh yeah you have options when it comes to what you want to use to make your cover i did laminate this one right here so i did laminate this one um as well so this is the second one that i made and so i laminated this cover which i think it's so beautiful um and i love it i absolutely love it so this is the second one and um what i will do though is i'll probably be doing another addition to this so i may cut it out uh laminate it again but do uh, just make a, a slight change the change I'm going to be making is I'm actually going to be putting one of these cardstock onto this one. So it's going to end up looking like that. And I'm going to be putting the cardstock in order to strengthen this laminate. It is not as strong as I would like it to be on its own. So I'm going to cut a full sheet, which includes the punched area all the way up to this side here i'm going to include a full sheet of cardstock and then i'm going to laminate them both together now hopefully my laminating machine can take the take the heat okay hopefully it can take the heat but that's what i'm going to be doing so that that area can be a little bit more secure we're going to go number into the second thing which is the cardstock the cardstock that i used i could not tell you what the weight of this cardstock is it is pretty thick and the reason i can't tell you the weight of the cardstock is because that one i've had it for probably four five years honestly i did not purchase it it just came i, I don't even know where this thing came from all i know is it was in my house and so hubby probably bought it for something you want to be be very careful with the cardstock that you use because they do come in different um, weight or thickness. So make sure you're choosing one that is still going to be decently bendable on the inside, but also secure on this side. You you have to have a cardstock that's secure because you're going to be pulling at this thing, and so you want it to be very sturdy. But you want it also to be flexible because you're going to be peeling up stickers. You're going to be peeling up stickers. I have no stickers here, y'all. That's why I can't peel up anything for you. They're all gone. But I do keep the outlines because I do reuse the outline of my stickers as well. Okay. But you're going to be peeling up stickers and you want to make sure that you're able to bend your sticker paper and still be okay with that. Right. Um, or the cardstock, I should say. Another thing about your cardstock is you're going to want to decide whether or not you want to make a short cut in order to attach your sticker pages to or a long cut. So you're going to attach it to a full sheet. It's going to make a difference in the thickness of your sticker book okay it's gonna make y'all you see how chunky that is it might be a little bit harder for y'all to see but y'all see how chunky this thing is 
okay? It's going to make a difference in that. Uh, and again, it's going to make a difference in how flexible it is. I like the flexibility of this right here, but it's also still sturdy because it has enough inside to keep it um, sturdy. This was, I'm going to tell you how many inches. I believe this was like three inches that I cut. Hold on, y'all. Don't go anywhere. I have one right here. So I'm going to share with you what the measurement of this one is. So you will know two, okay? So two inches across and then the length of your sticker book that you're going to be using. So that's the measurement that I used when it comes to our cardstock. So you will need about 15 of these um, cardstock, no matter whether you're doing the two inches or you're doing all of it, you'll need 15 for each sticker book because you have 30 pages if you're doing Happy Planner sticker books. Um, but if you're doing other types of sticker books, then of course it's just random and what and however many you need. Okay, so next we're going to be talking about adhesive. How are you going to be gluing your sticker pages together? One of the most common things to use is going to be a tape runner. I started using the tape runner um, when I was doing this sticker book. Um, and y'all, I ran through about three of these because I have three sticker books in here. And so you will use about one of these tape runners for every sticker book that you're doing, every 30 page sticker book you're doing. And you might even find that you need a little bit more than the one. Also, when I'm putting the adhesive on, I do not do the whole entire page. I only do certain strategic spot enough to make sure that it adheres to itself okay so each this this page adheres to this page and then i will do several sections right here that's it not the whole thing or else you'll be using way more than this um another method that i saw um at home with kita she did use a glue gun y'all she did use a glue gun and um i actually could not find my glue gun i found it after the fact which i think is also a good thing i was thinking of attempting this but i'm glad i like i said i did not find this glue gun because i don't think this is a method that i um would mm, it probably wouldn't last long for me so let me know you know if that's what you were thinking of trying or not now it is easy because it's just a glue gun the glue sticks are relatively inexpensive and you would get it done in no time um and i think it's also going to be very close to the next method that i'm going to be showing you which is the one that i end up um, using the most and so these are all done with the, the glue dots or the tape runner, right? This is all done with the adhesive runners. One of the things that I was concerned about with doing this was whether or not it was going to, you know, come off um, easily. But so far, it's actually been pretty good. It's actually been pretty good. It's holding up very well. I don't feel like I have to baby this book. Or anything like that so I think this is just absolutely wonderful the third method is going to be to use a liquid glue um, I asked for suggestions on the morning tea and the morning tea babes came through as usual one person says to use a liquid glue I did think to use um, glue sticks <laughs> However, my, all my glue sticks were like 25 years old, so, so that definitely would not work. So I went to Joann's, I had a 60% off coupon, and I picked up this glue stick. Don't ask me how much it was, I don't know, it was 60% off, that's all I know. This one does have two different um, tips, and so you can choose to use these two different tips. I used this one right here, which is a smaller tip. And so these stickers in here, I used this glue stick on, okay? 
I was concerned that this was going to make my page too wet. It wasn't going to dry on time. It was going to stick to everything. But as you can see, this is apps. It, it looks just like the other one. It worked out just fine. I will say, however, that yes, you got to be careful not to use too much of this because you will get a little, uh, you know, like it does get a little moist slash wet, but you don't see anything about any kind of wetness. You just, it just looks a little crinkly to me. That's all. That's all. Trust and believe. If it looks like too, too bad, I'll iron my pages. <laughs> but it looks just fine to me. I have not had a problem. It's not coming apart. Nothing. When you are using this on the edge close to this side, do not put it too close to the edge. Do not put it too close to the edge. You do not want any seeping out from underneath here. And then you have to try to wipe it off. And then that is going to stick to this. It's really going to stick. So that's my only warning about using this. But this is my favorite method right here. I don't have to worry about the heat from the glue gun. I don't have to worry about the glue sticks warming up. Y'all, this it was just like this. Oh, Lord, it was easy. It was easy. And this... I've already gone through two sticker books, two sticker books so far, and it almost looks like we have another, look, we have a bunch more to go, because you know that thing wasn't even full from the get giddy up, but it still has a lot left in it. So this is my favorite option when it comes to what you're using to adhere your sticker pages to your cardstock. One of like the most important things is going to be to sort your stickers, y'all. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, nobody told me this. One of the important things is going to be to sort your stickers before you start gluing things. Sort your stickers. Now, what do you mean by sorting your stickers? All right, you want to be able to sort your stickers and figure out how do I want to view my stickers in this sticker book. My colorful boxes, my first thought was to just put each colorful box individually. So I have my individual colorful box, one colorful box sticker book. Then I have behind it, once it's finished, another colorful box sticker book. But then I thought to myself, self, that doesn't make much sense. Why don't you put all of the black together? But that was after the fact. After the fact, after I had done glued one whole sticker book together and yeah, that was after the fact. So you need to sort your sticker book and figure out how do I want to view my stickers in this book. One of the main reasons why I did this with my colorful boxes is I wanted to flip my stickers this way instead of having to be to be flipping this way. I find flipping this way like a book to be so much easier than the other way around. So once I did the first sticker book and I figured out that okay this is not the way that I wanted them it was like well how am I gonna fix it? So on the second sticker book because they're the same ones Whatever sticker sheet was on this side, I decided that that was the one that needed to go on this side of the page so that I can see the two same sizes together. So that I know, okay, you have already, like look at this one, like you've already used all of this, but then I have to flip around here for the next one versus if I had done it right, it would be like this, but it's not. Okay, it's not like this. So anyhow, it was a learning um, um, curb. It was a learning process. So, <laughs> so you would have thought that I learned my lesson, right? <laughs> okay, we we gonna get there though. We gonna get there because you would have thought I learned my lesson. So I did this one, and on this side was this sheet. So I knew I needed to put this sheet here. So at this point, it didn't matter what order they were in inside of my colorful boxes sticker book because these pages weren't really next to each other. Some of them weren't even one behind the other. I would have to go through. So whatever is on the back of this page, I needed to make sure it was on the front of the new page I was making. Okay. 
So I had to, that's what I did with all of these. Now, remember I said to you earlier that I was putting together several colorful boxes together? <laughs> well, what I also did not calculate for is these colorful boxes. Okay, so what, are your, what is your transition? How are you going to transition from this color to these colors, right? What do you do? What do you do? How do you incorporate them? So I had already finished off my sticker book here. And then I had to go in with these pages. And I only had one of this sticker book, mind you. I only have one of this one. So I had to go in with these pages and say, okay, what colors would these pages go better with? And, and then once I found that, I inserted them in between. And this is the last page here okay I had to I had to do that instead of if I had if I had thought it out more then I could have put one of these hold on I could have put one of these pages on the back of this but instead it goes from this color over into this orange but anyway this is what ended up happening, right? So that's what happened all throughout. I, w I went through and tried to figure out where I could insert these. And I mean, it's okay, it's, it's in there. It's in there, one way or the other, we're in there, right? And so that's what we have in this particular um, book, right? Now, oh, like I said, you would have thought that I had learned the lesson that I should have learned when it comes to sorting my stickers, but then when I got over into this book, because I was so excited to start this book, I also did not sort very well. And so I ended up because I ended I ended up just not putting some stickers where they were supposed to be together. These two sticker sheets were not together in the sticker book. These were actually in different sections because they do have um, different color combination. It looks the same, but some of them are slightly different um, in here. So some of these were not together. Like this was not together either. You'll notice here, this is different. This is different because there's a different color that this goes with, even though they're you know pretty neutral. It goes with a different color so I had a hard time with this too trying to put like ones together that I liked so this goes with uh, the sheets that have more of this in here while this would go with the sheet that have more of these inside of it so this is two separate um, team uh, team of colors not theme t-h-e-m-e -E, but you know which might have been what we're supposed to be saying I don't know y'all so anyway, I like how it turned out. I wanted to have the quotes together in, you know, in the back. I didn't want the quotes mixed throughout like it was. I wanted the quotes in the back. So at least I was able to do that. And I decided that this would be the page that finishes everything off. And I have the rest of these in here because I have more sticker books that I want to cut and put in. But I might not, not on these discs. All right, we, we, ooh, child, we getting there in a second. We getting there in a second. And so uh, those are some of the tips that I've learned when it comes to sorting the stickers. You got to make sure you know what do you want to see and how do you want to see it. So let's now move into your discs and your tabs. Okay, your disc and your tabs, tips on discs and your tabs. Tip. Number one on the disc, if you're going to be using a Happy Planner punch, I'm going to advise you to stick with Happy Planner discs. These are the discs from Park Lane. Oh my goodness, they're so pretty. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love these colors and these discs. Uh, yeah, so I went to the store, purchased the disc, picked them up, brought them home. My expectation was that they were going to fit the same way that the Happy Planner disc fits, that everything was going to just flow. Mm-mm, y'all, mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It didn't. It did not. The pages would not turn when I punched it, y'all. I was like, what? 
what is happening, okay? So what I had to end up doing is cutting the slits larger. Every single one of them, y'all. So you can see the size difference between the Happy Planner slit and the slits that I ended up cutting. Now, y'all, can you imagine? Uh, this is like two sticker books. <laughs> These are nine that you got to slit twice because you got to slit left side and right side. Okay, so that's almost 20 slits per sheet. It was several hundred slits, y'all. I had to slit this thing several hundred times. Oh my gosh, somebody do the math and put it down in the comment section but down below. Uh, 60 pages, so 60 pages <laughs> ah, times a minimum of 18 slits because some of them, you know, if it doesn't cut wide enough, you got to go back and cut it again. And so I had to slit that thing. I would, That's why the rest are there. I'm like, I don't think I want to do the rest. <laughs> I don't think I want to do the rest. So I'd have to, or did I do the rest? Let me see. Uh, so that means let, let's, let's, yep, I already did them. So let's increase that because that means I did uh, 15 and 45, 45. I did this as well. So you got to add another 15. Oh my goodness. 45 pages, 45. And then I had to slit them um uh 20 times each okay all right good good to go so mm, mm, yeah yeah stick with the happy planner ones unless you're okay with making that many additional slits and sometimes for the beauty of the the sticker book i mean we'll do it we'll do it we'll do it <laughs> we will do it so that is the number one thing when it comes to your disc, okay? I do not know if Park Lane has a punch. I could not say. So there we go, right? There we go. So onto the dividers for this um, DIY sticker book. If you choose to use dividers, I would suggest using a full page divider or at minimum um, about six five or six disc divider. And the reason being, I did these, this was a suggestion and I did these and you see how it, it, it moves and wobbles? That's not thick enough. I'm gonna, let me just do the, close it. You see how, look look how that one is all like, mm-mm, mm-mm. You see the shifty, the movie, the all, mm-mm. That's not, mm-mm. That's not working for me. That's not working for me. I don't mind how it is right now. Um, and I would use something to to adhere this on here, but this is not working for me. This is not working for me. It's too shifty. So what I am going to do is I'm going to um, uh, laminate a sheet and just have a full sheet and then put some tabbed dividers on there as well. So that's going to be my one of my other steps to do in my new one. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this one since you know this one is okay anything goes over here anything goes over here this one is the one that we're gonna have to pet and baby and make it good make it look party uh as well so that is one of the things i would suggest about your dividers you can use lots of things in order to make your dividers if you like the clear like i do you can use um those clear uh laminate sheets three mil five mil um, you can also use um, uh, Happy Planner dividers and cut them down to size. You can use, like I said, scrapbook paper. Same thing you can use for the cover. You can use on the inside as well. You decide which ones you want to be able to use. It's up to you. It's your sticker book. But at the end of the day, whatever process you choose to use, just make sure that you're having fun with it, you're enjoying it, and not only that, you're loving the product and the outcome of it all because it's what you're going to have to see. And so I, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Um, and the cover is the only thing that I'm going to adjust right now 
You see how this is thinner? I don't understand what happened here, but something happened to it. And so this one is definitely thinner. So it's not as secure as I would like it to be. So I'm going to upgrade this. I'm gonna upgrade it mm -hmm, as well. Y'all, I hope that this video has given you some food for thought, some insight and some tips so that when you are doing your own sticker book, you can actually, you know, end up with a product that you love. I don't think I missed anything, but if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. Or if you have made one of these DIY sticker books yourself and you have any tips, leave the tips in the comment section for the um, persons who are trying to do their own thing, okay? Trying to do their own thing. Y'all, thank you for watching this video and I will see you all on the next one. Bye-bye.